For the next three nights, we're staying in a historic landmark, tucked away in over 300 acres of forest, and it's only a 30 minute drive from Seattle. Before we dive into the hotel staycation vlog, let me fill you in on some history. Completed in 1931, this building is a combination of Romanesque revival architecture and Art Deco interiors. For the first 45 years, it operated as a seminary, educating young men into priesthood. Then it closed in 1976, and the building sat empty for 45 years. Fast forward to present day. Upon decades of deterioration, the property underwent a $57 million restoration. While preserving its history, the building is now a luxury boutique hotel with a restaurant, spa, two bars, and an art gallery. And yes, we're doing a detailed tour of all of it while trying their fantastic food and drinks. The rest of this video will be more of a casual vlog with sprinkles of historical tidbits. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe. Now let's get this adventure started. To get to the hotel, you know, you're entering the state park road. You have to watch out for people because, you know, they have trails here. Mamio and I just made it to the lodge. I have been wanting to come and stay here since it opened. And I brought my painting because I'm working on it. I have to finish it this month. So we just entered from there. Over there is Cedar and Elm, the restaurant and the heritage bar. And the other side, there's a bunch of art. Usually mommy O and I, we stay in the same room, but this is a hosted stay, so thank you to the lodge for having us. They happen to give us two separate rooms. Mommy O actually wakes up way earlier than I do, so this might be good. There's also a desk area. Ooh, macaron, some dessert here. Our room is um, the same type of room. Let's see how similar or different it looks. All right, 515. Pretty much same. Ooh, I like that phone. Triangular. It looks kind of like a pyramid. Oh, look at this lamp. If you look at it from the top, it's a cross, a plus sign. That is a very nice texture. It's a little bit translucent. All right, you know me. When we do hotel tours, I tend to geek out about the furniture and decor. Here as well, look at that. Mmm, macaron. This one looks like a lemon bar. The lodge has their own wine? I didn't know that. We also have sparkling water. What is that wall about? This is an architectural drawing. This must be the original, but they scanned it and then scaled it up. What's our view? Oh, looks like there's a bunch of kids. Are they playing soccer? I don't know. Behind the entrance door, this looks to be a chalkboard. And then there are hooks at the bottom so you could hang your jacket. Next to the door, you can control the temperature of the room. Full body mirror. And then the carpet is quite fun. I'm guessing it's like flowers but zoomed in. Oh, it matches my shirt actually. Twinning with the carpet. See orange and black? And my shirt has orange and black. The chair at the desk, love the oranginess. As for the bathroom, we have a very tall mirror that looks like a, a window shape, like an old style window. The faucet has crosses. Body cleansing bar, grown alchemist, geranium leaf, bergamot, patchouli, and we have a shower stall. I don't think I've ever seen that before in person. They both swinging open. Once again, grown alchemist. Now the body cleanser has chamomile, bergamot, and rose. The shampoo has damask rose, black pepper, and sage. And then next to the shower stall, we have a painting. It looks like a print actually. A print of a bird's nest. Two towels, a smaller one above the toilet. And we have a robe. Slippers. We have another robe down here under the sink and slippers. Hair dryer, toilet paper, and then more towels. All right, all right. I just got the room in nighttime mode. They have blackout curtains. So they have two rows of curtains. This is the blackout one, and then they have blinds, and then the curtains. So it's actually three layers on both windows. I'm settling in, I put all my stuff here, so excuse the mess, but more about the desk area. We have a portable kettle, and then a light. Oh, that was bright. It's a cute light. Inside is like a bronze gold. We also have a coffee maker, and there's a big TV facing the bed. At the foot of the bed, there is um, 
What do you call those again? There's a word for that. I'm gonna sit on it and let's have some of this macaron. All right, let's have a pink macaron. I'm assuming it's gonna be strawberry flavor. I wonder where they got this from. Here, this lemon bar. For sure, it's lemony. You get that tang. Now we have a yellow macaron. I'm guessing this is lemon. So the theme here today, maybe they changed things up, I'm guessing. The theme here today is lemon and strawberry. Okay, this other dessert, it's kind of falling apart. I'm guessing that's like a strawberry crumble. Hmm, that has a tartness as well. All right, the closet has a safe, an iron, an ironing board. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hangers. Two of the hangers are very nice and soft. Satin. Off to dinner. On the main floor is Cedar and Elm, serving Pacific Northwest inspired fare from locally sourced farms, waterways, and their own garden. By the way, these hanging light fixtures are original to the building. About a month ago, a new chef took over, and that chef originally worked nine years at Noma. You know, the famous Noma, the one of Denmark. Executive chef Luke Kolpen happens to be a Seattle native, and he blends local ingredients with global inspirations. I heard generally their cocktails here are not too sweet, not overly sweet, just the way I like it. Ooh, that sounds lovely. <laughs> That's good. Try it. Mamio usually is not into cocktails, but you can see she approves. But it reminds me of herbal medicine. Medicinal cocktail. I wonder what this leaf is. Agave uh, nectar, oh. isn't it? Is this like agave leaf? Yeah. The cocktail is called Bitter Bird, and it definitely has some bitterness. Mm. Alright, so Mamio's gonna get their earth roasted black cod with cured egg yolk. I had to get the black garlic braised short rib because it's got mushrooms, specifically maitake and shiitake mushrooms. We also got a salad to share. And those crispy bits are onion. All right, let's destroy this dish. <gasps> Your cod is so smooth. That one just melts. Mm -hmm. You don't even need to chew with your teeth. <laughs> you just could chew with your tongue. <laughs> it's that soft. You definitely taste the flowers in that dish. What, what? A dessert with mushroom? We gotta try it. The salted caramel tart is topped with shiitake mushroom cream. Those purple bits are blueberry powder. That's a nice flavor. Mm -hmm. It's so refreshing. Mm -hmm. I definitely feel the mushroom in that. Umami dessert. That's a first experience. Very interesting. Across Cedar and Elm is the Gallery of Fine Arts. It has a rotating selection of local art for viewing and for purchase, all made by artists in the Pacific Northwest. There's also a permanent art collection that includes a statue called Lady of the Lake by Saba. The lodge is also home to an artist in residence program where local artists give demonstrations of their craft. You know that hanging clock in the hallway? It's original to the building. There's an area called provisions. Uh, whatever you want to buy here, you take it to the front desk and check it out. Finchberry. That oh, looks like candy land. They sell t-shirts and jackets as well. This one looks interesting. Wow, look at that. Are those trees? Okay, they have all kinds of snacks here. Brandini toffee. Inside our hotel room, there is no fridge, so just keep that in mind. Don't bring anything that's perishable. Caps and bucket hat. Ooh, this is a nice one. These look like seeds. It says lemon green sunflower. Doggy bags. Green yoga mats that remind me of AstroTurf. Actually, every Saturday, there's a yoga class here. We're on the third floor, We're going to enter the library, which is open 24-7. Quiet hours begin at 10 p.m., but it was already super duper quiet early in the day. There were three other people in the room whispering. This may be the most luxurious Scrabble board I've ever laid my eyes on.
Before boarding the flight to Dreamland, let's wind down with a short paint session. This piece is called Month of Moods. I've been filling in one box a day for August. I like to think of it as sketching with brushes. Good morning, it is Thursday. Our breakfast is at Father Mulligan's Heritage Bar. Mommy O is already here. This bar is named after Reverend Thomas Mulligan, whose photo is hung on the wall. In the morning, they serve breakfast and boozy coffee. After all, it's a bar. They serve regular coffee too. As for me, a cup of matcha is my hero, accompanied by a bowl of oats, which turned out to be really good. Like I want that for breakfast every day. It also has honey poached cranberry. Alright, this oatmeal has a very like in Korean I would say kozohe, like kinda nutty. Mamio ordered a side of eggs and sourdough toast. We just came down the stairs and this is the Tonsorium bar, which we will check out later. Turns out there's more art down here. These are ceramics by Gina Holt. And take a look at that bird. It has a floral crown, very cute. And the crow has a nest on its head. <laughs> wow, I like it. Along one side of the wall are photos, old photos of the lodge when it was a seminary. You know where the art gallery is? Without all that art, this is what it looks like. This photo must be taken inside the Cedar and Elm. Well, before it was Cedar and Elm. St. Edward's Seminary Dedication Banquet. So next to the art, there is a fitness room. Let's go inside. What weights, full mirror, some ellipticals. Next to the weights, they provide towels and some water. Gym rules and regulations. It's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No alcohol. Walking down the stairs and there is art on the walls. Up there we have a sculpture, a hanging sculpture, and down here we have a tinier sculpture holding the door. So just as an overview of the master proposal, uh, as you can see in its scope, uh, it was much grander than what was actually built. We actually are only this component here. There was an even larger tower that was originally proposed on the expansive grounds as well. This one's the Daniel Suite. So bride and grooms rent this out. Very frequently. In fact, there'll be a bride and groom to be in here momentarily, as Ooh. in a few hours. So this room used to be part of the chapel. So this is the biggest room and the only room of this kind. Yes, it's the only true suite and most definitely the most lavishly decorated with personal art from our ownership group. There's art on the walls, there's a sculpture in the corner as well, and a huge book. They have a walk-in closet, quite a big bathroom, very spacious, there's a tub in there. So this one's not accessible to the public, but we do want to show this, a spiral staircase original to the building. Wow! That's the bell. Do people still ring it today? We ring it for ceremonies and special occasions. Check out the view from up here. Beyond those trees, that's Lake Washington. Once in a while you see seaplanes flying by. I hear a seaplane. That's where we were earlier. And just like that, it's brunch time. This time, let's sit outside at Cedar and Elm. Beautiful table. Look at this. And quite thick, very glossy. You can see all the rings. Looks like they filled the gap with resin. This table makes dining so much more fun because all these gaps is like, ooh, maybe you could fit in there. <laughs> all right, let's see what our lunch options are. I'm gonna try this American Wagyu beef burger bookended by a brioche bun with a warm cup of ginger turmeric tea to wash it all down. 
Oh, I like it. Juicy. It's a nice light salad. It's got that tang. Lemon olive oil. Yeah, definitely lemony. We just learned that every weekend during like the warmer months, they have weddings. The lodge also has weekly yoga classes, live music, corporate meetings, and so forth. And there's a gymnasium where you can play pickleball. Some lounge chairs for those who want to sunbathe and socialize. Let's explore St. Edward State Park. There are a lot of picnic tables out here. There are some under trees if you want some shade. Up ahead, beyond the fence, is the grotto. Built in the 1940s by the seminary's students and faculty, the grotto is constructed from poured concrete and covered with river cobbles. Originally, it housed an altar with a statue of St. John Vianney. From afar, it might look like a humble structure, but if you look up close, it's pretty awesome. There is so much stone, like, that must have taken quite a bit of time. Once used as a space for ritual, worship, and small gatherings, today this secluded garden alcove holds intimate ceremonies with a capacity of 120 people. Immediately, I fell in love with this magical spot. I personally found it even more lovely when the weather was overcast. Use of the grotto by permit only. Contact the park ranger. This state park has quite a few trails. Let's check some out. So here's a state park map. We're gonna take the five, hit the water, and then circle back by the four trail. Some of the trails are bike friendly and the lodge offers complimentary mountain bike rentals for guests. Here we go. Hello, Lake Washington. So actually we were going towards the water on the five and it was pretty much downhill. If we have to go uphill, like from the beach to the lodge, five will be very difficult for sure because it's a lot of uphill. We were wondering like maybe we should just do two on the way back. We don't know how uphill or downhill it is. Is it going to be mostly uphill? or mostly downhill towards the lodge. All right, so we're gonna take the two trail. On the map, trail number two shows that it's like going along the water. There's like little beaches on the side. The main beach, I'm just gonna call it the main beach. There's quite a few people there, but when you take the trail two, there's like more private, lesser ventured beaches. Oh, what's that? Something's hanging there. I guess it's like a sort of swing. The first time I hiked here, I believe it was in February and it was a little muddy. So I definitely recommend like more hiking boots. However, in warmer months, it's more dusty. Like as we film this, it is August. And the ground is quite dry and dusty. So far, trail two, you keep hearing water splashing on the shore. It's quite nice. Here's another beach. Check out this tree. It's like a little cave. Very hollow. How is this tree even alive? Well, is it alive? Oh yeah, there's leaves on it. Wow, look at the side. Lots of woodpecker. Ooh. All right, another mini beach. Someone docked their boat over there. Another beach. This is like what, our fourth or fifth beach we're seeing, the hidden one. You know, look at this. Oh, look like ribs, huh? Oh yeah, the ribs. <laughs> yeah, they look like ribs. This one looks kind of like a lizard from further away. Yeah. Oh, another beach area. There's a boat right there. Ooh. North Trail, here we come. I see it. It's already getting uphill. There's a side trail. It goes into uh, like a council of trees situation. What is that? That looks like a sculpture in the middle. Oh, so sweaty. Just a little uphill and it all comes pouring out. My butt's on fire. These roots really look like fingers, just like twisting. More roots that look like fingers twisting. That's a big bump on the tree. Oh, it's the size of like a basketball. For those who need a little break, a bench. Whoa, check out these tree roots. <gasps> Looks like ocean waves of twisted fingers. Natural steps. Stairs. Oh yes, it's like a natural staircase. 
There's mushrooms. Oyster. Yeah, it looks like oyster mushrooms. I see another cluster over there. Oh, over there. Nice. They're big. Check out these roots. It looks like they're crawling like a spider. Look at this stump. It looks like a finger pointing up like this. <laughs> It looks like our hike is coming to an end. It's a little past 1.30. That was a good walk. It is nice and cool under the wedding tent and the ceiling is so lovely. It has those fairy lights hanging. Love the draping, all the lines. And then as the breeze goes through, the curtains sway with the wind. Romantic. We meet up with Corey, the general manager, for an extended property tour and even take a stroll through the chef's garden. Grown organically, though we did not uh, go for the certification process up to this point in time. It's all edible. So 98% of it is used in the culinary program in the kitchen. You'll see Chef Luke out here himself or one of his team. The other percentage uh, that's used in the bar program, if even 2%, uh, because that's the, the mint and the herbs and other items that can be used, such as on our shrub that we just had. You can make like 5,000 cocktails here. There's so much. <laughs> so many leaves. With the oyster shells, those are from Taylor Shellfish. They keep off predators as well. I like it. You're giving second life to the shells. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six boxes. So. All in, there's well over 300,000 bees at peak season. Uh, our groundskeeper, Ben, we're, everyone, some folks wonder like, what's happening with all of these rustic doors buried in the soil? The, he took uh, original seminary doors, they were just in storage, and he made flower boxes out of them. Parked where the valet stands is a vintage 1938 Pontiac tour, rebuilt in 2008 with modern conveniences. Guests can book the stretch limo and your personal chauffeur can drive you around town. Ride in style for special occasions. Maybe go on a wine tasting tour in Woodenville or catch a concert. I don't know where the time is going, but it's already happy hour. Well, happy hour at the Tonsorium Bar is from 2 p.m. to 5 daily. What's with the barber chair, you might ask? This bar is where the seminary's barbershop used to be. Along the long, curvy booth is a mural of trees, creatures, and mushrooms. Just can't get enough of those mushrooms. From Sunday to Wednesday, they have happy hour all day. This one is the Confessor's Old Fashioned. Oh, I think they burnt it a little bit on the top. Definitely can smell that. This one is the Dog Days of Decadence. That tastes like serious business. This cocktail recipe was invented by the bartender here. If old fashion is cigarette, this one tastes like a cigar. Strong and unique. The confessor's old fashioned, you really feel like you taste the alcohol. It's like more in your face. But the dog days of decadence, it's very smooth. I think because of balsamic vinegar. Yeah, there's balsamic vinegar in it. We got a small charcuterie plate with seeded crackers. Turns out, Dog Days of Decadence was made to go with this dish. On Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday evenings, you can enjoy live music. Tonight, local acoustic guitarist Andre Ferriante soothes our soul. This evening, we attend a special event featuring Cadence Winery. Cadence has been crafting small production wines from their urban Seattle winery since 1998. So well, this is uh, a salmon that has been very likely here in miso and seaweed. And then it's served with some uh, garnishes from our garden. Uh, we have some purslane as well as some uh, nasturtium seeds. It'll add a little bit of a peppery note to it. And the sauce there is buttermilk and dill. Mm -hmm. This sauce looks like a painting. It's like, 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 it
what we have in front of you now, this is kind of a little bit of a celebration from the garden. We have some sun gold tomatoes, an heirloom tomato, and I've uh, served this with uh, some stone fruits and other fruits as well, and herbs. Well, for all of you, the sauce is uh, based off of peach, nectarine, and pluwa. And for most of you, it's been infused with uh, seaweed, and then parsley oil for all. On top, we have various uh, garnishes from the garden, marjoram, oregano, some pea flowers. We also have some uh, sweet peas from the garden as well, uh, that are just in there nice and raw some fennel pollen as well, and we also have some quince as well, some quince reduction that we just kind of reduce down until it's a natural gel. Um, so every little uh, bite on this is kind of meant to be uh, a little bit different. Mm. Oh, these are mm. awesome. This is a really lovely dish. It is, I agree. So for most of you, our next serving is going to be uh, beets and beef. Uh, taken some Wagyu short rib and just seared it off and cooked it to a nice medium rare. So some of that fat just kind of just makes it very nice and tender. Yeah. The beet intensifies the redness of the beef. So most of you, this is a serving of scallops. They've been seared uh, and served with pumpkin seed uh, oil, a uh, oil that is made from porcini mushrooms and uh, king oyster mushrooms that have been kind of charred and reglaze with more of that horseradish oil. Every bite and sip has been an adventure. Dessert was unique as well. Chef Luke made oil out of marigold and put it on this dish. By the time I got back to the room, it was nearing 11 p.m. But dinner was not over. There were deer munching the grass right outside the window. Guess what day it is? Friday! Woohoo! Going down. Going down. We learned from the chef yesterday at the dinner. He was saying the peaches he got, the ones that were bruised, they tasted even better than non-bruised peaches because the bruises are like the pockets of honey, sweeter, more, way more tasty. Check out how tall this croissant is. Look at the side view. And I love how they put the bacon in crosses. I like how the egg just expands outside of the croissant. It looks like they used three, four eggs. It looks so substantial, the amount of egg. It's bigger than my face. <laughs> my face is pretty big, so. I'm still admiring this croissant. I just took the top off. It's so voluminous, it looks muscular. It's a croissant that's been working out. It echoes so awesomely in here. Ah. <laughs> Mommy O plays pickleball frequently, but I thought when she says she plays pickleball, she plays on the court, but actually it's just her hitting the ball to a wall. Just let the ball cross over the net. The only rule today is uh, keep your body moving. Pickleball is turning out to be a bigger exercise than I imagined. You will break out in sweat. You know, in like the winter months, like when it's rainier and stuff, maybe it's too muddy to hike outside. If you want, you can stay indoors and do pickleball. And we just invented a new sport. It's called a pickle basketball. <laughs> can you imagine what this is gonna be like? Every Thursday and Friday, there's a St. Edward afternoon tea. Basically, it's a modern take on high tea. Crumpets, teacups, and beautiful bites await, along with live music. Guests are more than welcome to dress up, and don't forget to make a reservation. Pinkies up. <laughs> it's so active, the bubbles. <laughs> There's capers in it, right? Mm -hmm. 
and got a little bit of that citrus, that tang as well. I like the tiniest squares of lemon. Very Korean taste. This one's a smoked salmon with onion jam and preserved peppers. I love the colors in this and the shapes. I want to paint it. That one's so good. Mm -hmm. A lot of flavor power in that one. Something about the peppers makes me feel like I'm eating Thai food. If anyone wanted to do like a Thai themed tea party, this is a must. Spicy. Yeah, spicy. I thought that was sitting on a cracker, but it got soggy. But it's actually a slice of tomato potato. Mm. Because there's potato and bacon in it, it tastes like breakfast. So this is the everything bagel chip with cream cheese and kelp caviar. My favorite so far, I have to say, is the one with the preserved peppers. What's your favorite? Oh, you're cute. Okay, same. Wow, butterfly! These are so cute. The butterflies are made with shaved cucumber, watercress, and herbed mascarpone. <laughs> it's a bitter. Yeah, it is bitter. This is the beet marinated deviled eggs with caper and crispy garlic. And of course, those flower petals. The flavor develops. Mm -hmm. When you first bite into it, it tastes plain, but then it climbs. Oh, the color is beautiful. Oh, my. Oh, my. The crust is like a cracker that's very crispy, and the inside is very smooth and sweet. Oh, that must have been the honey butter tartlet with honey poached cranberries. Oh, my stuff. This one's in the shape of a triangle. Pistachio mousse. The mousse is quite nice. Mm -hmm. I don't see this on the menu, but it looks to be carrot cake. That's a perfect amount of sweet. So this is actually a flax seed crumpet. Are we going to put jam on it? At first it was very bland, but you start to feel more of that subtle flavor. A little saltiness, a little savoriness, and then now we're gonna add on some bone mama wild blueberry preserves. Mmm, much better with jam. I actually like it plain as is as well. Mm. Mm. After a short paint session and some computer work, dinner time rolls in. Here we have the gardener's gimlet, and those tiny leaves are so cute. That tastes magical. Something that fairies would drink. Schnitzel. It's one of the waiter's favorites. <laughs> There's a crow over there. That's awesome. So savory. So when it first came out, it looks very simple, but the flavor is so much more exciting than it looks. And underneath, there's that kale with caper. This is the handmade ricotta nudie. It's got that American speck ham with mushrooms. <laughs> Whoa. Very crispy, bubbly exterior. <gasps> you know, it reminds me of um, rice cake. Karetok. There's the cheese inside. Soft like a really warm karetok. It's very cheesy because of ricotta. Got that saltiness and it's so soft. When you put it in your mouth, it feels like your tongue is landing on a bean bag. Upon sunset, Flock after flock of crows pass by the silhouette of trees. It's Saturday morning. For the final breakfast, we gotta try something new. The hearth roasted mushroom frittata. I like to describe that flavor as friendly savoriness. It has foraged mushrooms. I love this frittata. Very light, fluffy, no potato inside, and not salty. Lightened up my spirit, morning spirit. In the final hours at the lodge, we visit the spa downstairs. Vita Nova Spa offers massages, facials, body treatments, and an infrared sauna. Oh, definitely feeling the heat. I gotta put my camera down. I'll be back. There's an indoor relaxation area with refreshments. 
and the private outdoor space with a fire pit and water feature. Going through their spa menu, ooh, everything sounds so relaxing. There's also something called Kaleidoscope Healing that includes a deep tissue massage plus aura charging energy work, chakra clearing. I'm intrigued and curious to know more. Fried chicken sandwich and fries. Granola parfait. Just checked out of the lodge. We're a little bit in a rush because I've got a long day ahead with a lot of, uh, a lot of commitments, a lot of plants. So I'm trying to like take some deep breaths. We didn't get to finish our meal on site, but we did get it to go. And can I just say, these fries are fan-freaking-tastic. They, like, when you take one fry, it feels hefty <laughs> when you bite into it. French fry ASMR, so crispy. How was that chicken sandwich? Very good, savory, very well fried, so crispy, crunch. They've got the crispy down. Hope you enjoyed this video as we explored the lodge and the surroundings. It was a staycation filled with nature and history. Also art and relaxation. There's so much to enjoy on site that it's a destination of its own. For more information on the lodge, I put their website link in the description box. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Toodles, my noodles. Dirty butter, basically. Mm. We're left over with just tons of butter every night. And instead of throwing it away, we mix it and put it back into the menu, reuse it, and uh, it's yeah. absolutely delicious. It's great. If it's not dirty butter, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> I was just filming these rails, and then I saw Mommy O's head through the window. She's at the gym right now. <laughs> Looking outside, there are people doing yoga in the distance, and there's also a photo shoot on this hedge. Also, a bunch of cones lining up over there. Right here is where the grotto is. Take a look around. Trees surrounding you everywhere. Greenery awaits and hugs you. There's your tomato. For the full 19 minutes of outtakes and bonus footage, join our Patreon for extra content and to support our channel. A ton of video clips didn't make it into this video for varying reasons, mostly due to pacing and some randomness. Basically, I made an extra vlog using all this extra footage, and you can watch it on Patreon. Remember to hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Remember this dish? The one with salmon cured with miso and seaweed? accompanied with buttermilk and dill sauce. The imagery stayed in my head and I had to paint it. For more arts and crafts updates, follow my Instagram at creativechillout. Oh, I've got so many projects whirling around in my head. I can't wait to get them all out and share them with you.